So, uh, hello everyone. Um, for me to be here in front of you all today um, is uh, something that I truly love to do. I love to inspire young people, speak about my journey and how I got into um, the sport I do. So my name is Courtney Tulloch. I'm 27 years old and I am a gymnast for Great Britain. Okay, so, uh, like I said, thank you for coming here and watching my assembly and you'll learn a lot about me and, and my journey. So I started gymnastics when I was six years old and uh, how it came about is I'm a big football fan. Um, I support Manchester United. Do we have any football fans in here? Cool. What team do you support? Newcastle. Newcastle. What team do you support? Liverpool. Liverpool, okay. Arsenal. Arsenal. Oh, I'm not sure we can be friends, but nah. Um, okay, so I'm a... Uh, Chelsea, they're okay, I like Chelsea. So I was watching um, a football one day and one of the players, he, he scored a goal and then to celebrate, he did like a round off somersault and I was just amazed by it. And I remember thinking, I want to be able to do that. So when I go into school and score a goal, everyone will think I'm really cool. So I was in the living room trying to do like forward rolls and backward rolls and I was really bad at the time. And one day my nan was sitting there just drinking her cup of tea. Then I did a cartwheel and I kicked her hand then the teacup went up in the air, came down, smashed, and my mum was not happy. Sent me to my room and was like, okay, we need to get this energy out of him, so we'll send him to the local gymnastics club. And honestly, from that moment, as soon as I walked through the doors, it was just like a big playground for me, and I just fell in love with the sport because of the way it challenged me mentally and physically. Okay, so... So um, in this little bit, I'll talk about my career so far, things I eat, what my training schedule's like, and we'll speak, you can ask me questions at the end, and the demonstrations will be the best bit, I promise. So, yeah. So like I said, that's how I started uh, my, my career. So I, I went aside when I was six years old. By the age of 12, I watched my first Olympic Games. So have you ever watched, the, has anyone ever watched the Olympic Games here? What Olympics did you watch? Is it Rio 2016? I'm not really sure. Not sure. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, so. Nice, love that. So for me, I watched the 2008 Beijing Olympics and this for me was a big moment in my head because I saw one of my idols, Lewis Smith. Um, he won a bronze medal on the pummel horse. So for me, I was watching at home, just watching the TV and I was in awe of what he did. And I remember saying to myself that I'm gonna work as hard as I possibly can to make sure one day I'm competing for my country and I'm winning medals for my country at the Olympic games. And fingers crossed next year, um, there'll be an Olympic games in Paris and fingers crossed I'll be there. And my goal is to win a medal on the rings and win a medal as a team. Um, so I hope you can all watch me and, and cheer for me and support me, guys. That would mean so much to me. Okay, so things that I eat as a gymnast. So do you think we can eat like McDonald's every day? No, no? what about like chocolate cake for dessert every day? No. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm so I won't lie. Don't tell my coach. Sometimes I do treat myself to a little chocolate cake that's my weakness but for me um, for breakfast I like salmon and eggs with avocado on toast or porridge for lunch I like lots of pasta or fish and then dinner I like to get lots of meat in me so lots of protein lots of veg all this enables me to train from four to six hours every day when I train I make sure I drink lots of water it's so so important to keep me hydrated and focused so I can stay at the top of my game because being an athlete I think the most important thing is that when you do turn up to training, you can give 110% every time. And it's the small things that make the difference when you're standing to standing on top of the podium and maybe missing out on a medal. So that is so, so key. So these medals that I've brought with me, I know I've seen a few of you already, but okay. So like I said, my, my dream and my goal is to get to Olympic Games. But unfortunately, in 2016, um, 
I worked so, so hard. I didn't miss a training a session in four years. I made sure I was eating correctly. I was listening to my coaches. Um, I felt like I did everything I possibly can to go to the Rio Olympics. But unfortunately, I was not selected to go and I was reserved. And for me, um, I was heartbroken. I was devastated because I'd worked so hard, but it wasn't meant to be. So in that, in that moment, I had a decision to make. Do I give up on gymnastics and maybe try something else? No? Or do I get back into the gym, listen to my coaches, listen to my family, and keep going and keep believing in myself and keep pushing? Yeah? So that is what I did, but I won't lie to you, it was very, very difficult. There were times where I did think, okay, maybe I'm not good enough and maybe this sport isn't for me, but my family, my friends, my coaches, they really got behind me, they supported me. And two years later, I went to my first Commonwealth Games and I came away with these medals. And why these medals mean so much to me is because this medal gave me the the confidence and belief in myself that I can compete with the best gymnasts in the world and, and stand on top of the podium. So, have you held this one yet? Have you seen this medal yet? Do you want to hold that? Look after that for me. Don't drop it, okay? Okay, and so I won that medal, uh, like I said, at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. And the ne very next day I won this medal. And why this medal means so much to me is because there's a apparatus in gymnastics called the vault. Has anyone heard of it? Yeah? No? So it's like there's a runway and there's, yeah, that's the one. So there's a springboard and you jump onto the, the vault and then you push off it and do somersaults, twists, and then you've got to land on your feet again. And growing up in gymnastics, um, I was terrible at the vault. I'd been to so many competitions and I've come last on vault maybe... 50, 60 times where I'd mess up my routine or forget what I'm doing or just do something silly. And for me, um, I remember loads of coaches and people said to me, maybe you shouldn't do vault. You're not very good at it. Maybe you should stick to the rings, which is my favorite apparatus. But for me, I didn't listen to that because I felt like I knew it wasn't very good, but I enjoyed doing it. So I just kept working hard at it, kept going kept believing myself, just kept going, working hard in training. And after winning that medal, I got this medal. And it was my first ever medal on vault. Um, and I did the vault of my life and I stuck it dead, dead on the, on the mat. And um, for me, uh, when I wake up in the mornings, when I'm in hard training, I make sure this is the first thing I, I see as just a reminder to myself that you shouldn't listen to people that tell you you can't do things. If you believe in yourself, if you want something badly enough and you work hard at it, anything is possible. Okay, so do you want to hold this one? Yeah. And then the last medal I've brought with me um, is this bronze medal. And last year, I went to the World Championships in Liverpool and I got my first ever world medal. And um, this medal means so much to me is because in Liverpool, my family and my friends all got to come and watch me um, compete. And normally the competitions are in other countries like Australia and it's a long way to travel. To have, so to have all my old school teachers, my family, my friends there supporting me and to win this medal in Liverpool, it's just very, very special. So you can hold that, look after that for me. Okay, so now hopefully um, there's a video we can watch um, on the screen. It will be a clip on my favorite event on rings. So let me know what you think, okay? I'll just try and get out the way here without driving up. They do. You know what? You know, you know some stuff, you. <laughs> it, it, they do. It's very difficult. That is so true.
Pringles. Sometimes you, um, some people have their muscles pulled. Cool, so what do you think? Nine out of ten? Ten out of ten? Ten? Nine? Yeah. <laughs> ten out of ten, love that. Okay. Um, let me get out of the way here. So, like you were saying, um, gymnastics, um, there's always judges um, and you get judged on the, the types of skills you do, so how hard they are. And then if you're slightly offline, if you don't stick the landing properly, if you bend, bend your legs a little bit, your knees always need to be straight and toes pointed and the judges can deduct and take from that. Um, but the higher your routine is and the cleaner your execution is, the, the, most like, the more chance of you standing on top of the podium. And I always say the most important thing at the end of routine is to stick the landing. Um, just because it's the last thing you do and it's the last thing the judges see. So if you stick the landing, it just leaves a good impression in the judges' minds, okay? So now we'll get on to some of the demonstrations, okay? So this is how it's gonna go. I'm going to do a little trick. You're going to give me a round of applause and then quietly you can put your hand up and guess what that skill is. Do we understand? Yeah, I'm gonna start. So when you, when you go into gymnastics, you um, you don't just walk in and you can learn how to somersault straight away. It takes a long time to be able to, to do these skills safely and, get, and practice them and do them perfectly. So these are the types of skills where you learn um, when you get, come into gymnastics and um, they don't take so long to do, but they're vital and they're very good basics. Okay, so I'm going to start nice and easy. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see a few of these. Oh, you've got that one. Okay. So, I think some of you might have tried this one before. Thank you. Okay, what skill was that? Hand up. What was the first one you said? Forward draw, perfect. Have we, anyone ever tried a forward draw before? Couple? Okay, next trick. Thank you. What one was that? Backward roll. Okay, next one. Not, ooh, not a somersault, but similar, similar. Okay, next trick. In a little bit, I'm gonna go this way, okay. What was that? Cartwheel, perfect. Okay, next. Any hands up here? Have tried a cartwheel before? Few people. Okay, next one. Get now. We're getting a little bit more tricky. Okay, I'll try not to kick anything. <laughs> okay, what was that? Do you know? Wow, nice, perfect, okay. Next trick, okay. So the scariest thing in gymnastics is to somersault backwards because you can't really see where you're going. Um, and it takes a long, long time to, to, to learn and do safely, especially on, on hard ground. Um, so I just say this all the time, so um, if I do this, you will have to promise me, especially the teachers, you're not going to go and just throw this skill and try it. Okay? Because it takes a long time to do safely. Promise? Okay. Do we all promise? Okay. You ready?
Thank you. So, what was? Huh? That's yeah. That's the skill I watched on TV when when the footballers got a goal, and I always wanted to do that. Perfect. Well, give yourselves a round of applause. Ten out of ten. Do um, has anyone got any questions they would like to ask me about uh, the sport or anything? How long do I have to train? So um, now I train from four to six hours every day. Um, if, if training goes really well and I do everything I need to, um, my coach lets me go a little bit earlier. But if I struggle with a few things or I need to work even harder or when I come back from holiday and I've had too many fizzy drinks and stuff, <laughs> things like that, then I'll be in training, doing more fitness um, and exercises to get fit again but roughly about four to six hours every day. This question was... Oh, yeah. And he said, if you were the, uh, not with gymnastic, gymnast, what would you be doing? You were... um, if I weren't a gymnast, I've always loved sport, so I'd like to think it would be in sport, but um, I'd love to have been a footballer, but I don't think I was very good when I was young. But maybe athletics, I think maybe in sprinting or... I'd love to maybe I've done a bit of acting, maybe a movie star or something, but I'm not sure if I'm any good. <laughs> and uh, some more questions. There were two children yesterday who they go to the day because they put the they discharge. Yep. Oh. Of them. yep. They said, How have you learned to do all this gymnastics? How have I? You learn. So it just takes so some of the uh, the first skills I showed you, when you go into gym, you learn the, the smaller skills and they help you progress into the bigger skills. Um, but it takes a very long time to, to be able to learn these skills. But um, for me, when I joined gymnastics, I just found it all fun. Um, the coach made it into, into like a game where you're competing against each other and you're with a team of people. So you're all learning, training together. It's a little bit like um, when you come in and you're in school together and um, you have fun and play games, it's a little bit like that. And then as, as when I started and when I was a bit younger, I never really thought about competing for my country or anything like that until I watched the Olympic Games. So when I first joined, it was just all fun um, for me, learning tricks, doing double somersaults, um, swinging off rings and swinging off the bars was just something that um, I really enjoyed doing. And that feeling I get from it is just like... Uh, the best feeling in the world for me. Oh, one, sorry. Yeah. What is your favorite drill? What is your favorite thing you like to do when you are in championship or when you are in school? Um, so for me, com in, the, in gymnastics, my favorite thing is competing. I'm a very competitive person. I have, I, I've got a twin brother. So growing up, we were always, who's the better twin? Who's better at Xbox and always just just always battling each other and competing against each other. So for me, um, I love that, the, the adrenaline and getting nervous and getting butterflies in my, in, in my belly before comps. I just think it's exciting. Um, so for me, competing is something that um, I truly, truly love. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I think it's just gold plated, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not, I've been asked that before. I'm not, I don't, no, I don't think it's real gold, but it's a real gold medal that I, that I won, I promise. Any other questions? Are we all good? Yes. My daughter has her first gymnastics lesson on Saturday. Oh, nice. First gymnastics lesson, wow. Um, I would just say just have as much fun um, as possible and um, just ask lots of questions um don't uh don't need to be shy in, in in gym if you don't understand something just um ask the teacher ask the other gymnasts um but she'll have um most fun i'm sure yes Ooh. um for me i've always liked to coach that understands me um, as, as a person understands the things that, that I like. I think when you're, you're a bit younger, you need a little bit more discipline and you can't 
it's more what the coach says and or sets a number and um, you need to follow the coach's plan. But as you get a bit older, it can, it's almost you're more like a team um, and you can sort of negotiate and see how you feel on the day. If I wake up and I'm a little bit more sore or if things are a bit more achy, you can have that talk with the coach. Um, but for me, I, my coaches have always understood did me and they've worked well with my parents as well and I think that's such an important thing that the parents and the coach can communicate if we've had a bad week at school or if um, I'm a little bit upset because I can't go to my best friend's birthday party but I've got a competition coming up and if they they can talk and understand why I might be feeling a little bit down in the gym and they can work together but if the coach can understand me and know what knows what mo motivates me I think that's the the best thing um, but I think always as well, the coach and the parent always understanding that, um, that the athlete and for me, um, when things don't go to plan, we, we're more, up, the more upset than most upset than, than anyone. Like we really do feel it. So I've always loved it when the coach and my parents are always there supporting, have always been there um, because it is hard when things don't go to plan. And I know sometimes it might seem like we're, we don't care and we're not bothered, but we, we really are. So. Um, I would say that. Yep. How long have I been doing gymnastics for? So for 21 years now, I've been doing gymnastics for. Um, but honestly, it's gone so, so quick. So it's gone so, so fast. Yes. Yes. Um, I always, I've, naturally, I don't know why, I've always been a very positive um, person. Um, and I think, sometimes I think, um, uh, sometimes I know I maybe I'm not the best at something or um, I struggle with something, but I've always tried to, to be confident in, in my own ability, in myself. And sometimes I tell myself, I'm, I'm going to be the best. I will be the best. I will. I can do this. Um, I can get through this. Just telling yourself that every day um, is just, just motivates me because I know that um, because I'm a very competitive person, I know some of my rivals, they, they'll be working very hard in the gym. So telling myself that I can get through this, I can work hard, I can do these things. And it helps me push myself and drive myself. So just being very... Um, speaking to yourself and speaking um telling yourself that you can do things and being very positive and loving towards yourself is so so important i think um so just tell yourself tell yourself that as much as you need to every day um i i do it um i know what i want i know what my goals are and i set my, my set, set my goals out i write them down on a bit of paper i make sure i see them every day um just to remind myself that during the hard times as well, there is, a, there is an end goal and there's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I think that's so, so, so key, so, so important. Yes. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, that's, that, that happens. Um, I think growing up, when I was younger as well, gymnastics, a lot of people were like, gymnastics, that's for girls, like, why are you doing gymnastics? Um, and things like that. And you do get people that are negative and can't really see your journey and are not supporting you. But um, for me, that's not nothing to do with you, that's on them. I think you need to focus on what you're doing and what you want, because at, at the end of the day, that's, that's all that matters. Um, so I wouldn't, what, when people do say it, it will happen. So when people are a little bit negative and when people do say things, you just got to brush it off and not listen. And cause that's not important. The most important thing is what you believe in. And if you believe in yourself, if you work hard enough, you, you make the right sacrifices, whatever it is you want to do. Um, if you can do that, then you'll be absolutely fine. Don't worry or listen to what other people have to say. Cool. We all good. Anything else? Yes. Next year, you're gonna compete. Do you want to tell us about that? We're gonna see you. Yes. So next year, um, in in the summer, will be the uh, Paris Olympic Games, and um, my my like I told you, my dream and my goal 
is to be standing um, on the podium winning a medal at Olympics. So uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I'll be there. And like I said, I'd love for you all to, to tune in, watch me on TV um, and, and support me. Um, and I look a little, I look uh, quite a bit taller on TV for some reason, but I might look a little bit different. But uh, yeah, I'll be there and um, I'll try my best and work as hard as I can to, to win a medal for the country. So thank you. Cheers. Thank you. So much. Thank you.